Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, how many rooms have you looted in the last uh, week? Um, does looting the dairy cooler at work count? Yep. Then, then one. Uh, okay. Multiple, t- multiple times. But multiple times. I yeah. think that that count. I think that that counts as more than one. I think they, that counts. They for foolishly spot. just re- restock the room, and I just remove everything from it. Okay, I no longer care. The point is, we have on the show today uh, a man who knows a lot about looting rooms and a lot about bullets. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, Chris Bissett, thank you for being on the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, it's terrific. We have not talked in a little while, uh, but when Alex said that you were coming on the show, I was like, wait, I know that person, um, because we both auditioned in the same game for Open Legend. We certainly did. We certainly did, and for all of you folks out there who have been long-term listeners of the show, you will be very happy to know that I played Puffy Pants. <laughs> I played Josiah Puffy Pants, and I think I blew up um, almost, almost the entire group in a cave. People. Yeah, except for you. In ATPK, almost hard, total party kill. Ah, uh, yeah, Hang or on. awesome total pebble knockdown. One of the yes. two. <laughs> it's one of the two. But Chris, you made it out of that. Just about, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you went <laughs> you went back into the caves and you looted everything. Yeah. Yes. I made it out whether my uh, pride did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No, your pride didn't make it out of that. <laughs> that my was... pride didn't get in there with me. No, no. <laughs> That's how you got out. You just teleported back to your pride outside the cave. <laughs> Yeah. Lo and behold, that's, your pride is common. actually a pride of lions, and you were eaten shortly after leaving the cave. Oh, man, is that what happened? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh. That's, that's annoying. And, and it's Damn, also, uh, like, oh my god, you had lions? That wasn't even a story point. Oh, well. Um, no. It was <laughs> a short it, game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it works. It works. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Nobody will ever know. No one gets out. No one gets out alive. Uh, so, Chris, you you have a you have a site called Loot the Room. Yes. And and uh, and on there, I think you're probably most famous for doing maps. You do maps a lot. Uh, I do. I do a few maps. Yeah. Uh, once a week on a Monday, I do maps. That's always okay. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how long have you been doing this for? <laughs> um, that's a weird question. Because, I mean, I've been drawing maps. Yeah, I've been playing D&D and things like that for 20 years, thereabouts, mm-hmm. and I've always drawn maps. Um, I started Loot the Room actually two years ago, next week, and posted maybe three things to it, and then forgot <laughs> about it for a year. Um, and then I restarted it a year ago, next week. So a year, let's say a year. Somebody cut out. Hmm. Yeah. Was, was good thing we're all recording our own lines. Yeah, we're all recording our own lines. <laughs> right. That's always good. <laughs> um. So okay. So that was a weird question, but I am full of those. So that's fine. That's, I've had weirder. Don't worry. So yeah. so you've been doing it actively for about a year. Yeah, kind of consistently, um, really working at it for about a year. Yeah, thereabouts. So, so in a year of actively working on it, you've gotten yourself a uh, a, uh, a nomination for an any there, huh? Yeah, somehow. <laughs> uh, I won't go into how I made that happen because I broke several laws, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, I assume some of them were would be fine in Vegas. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's a that sounds good. Um yeah, no, I think that that's a pretty big accomplishment considering, you know, the like the time that you've been doing it. I mean, you're yeah, in I'm pretty I'm, good company. So. I'm blown away. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it still hasn't sunk in. <laughs> Don't worry, it will. It'll oh, sink yeah. in when you win it and then you go, "Look, I won." <laughs> oh god. 
and somebody takes Lou Ward and smashes it over your head, and you go, oh, now I get it. Yeah. It's your Eureka That's okay, because I'm not going to Gen Con, so they can smash it over like a cardboard cut out of me. <laughs> That's <laughs> they fine. Can, they, t- they, they get it in a catapult. They'll chuck it over yeah. to you. <laughs> Trebuchet. <laughs> That's Absolutely. right. That can Melissa. span the length of the Atlantic. It'll get, it'll, <laughs> it'll get, it'll get there. Yeah, let's start that catapult trebuchet argument. Oh yes, ballista. <laughs> it'll be a ballista. It'll Screw be a ballista. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Who doesn't like fast? giant? Who doesn't like giant crossbows? Um, I, I, I don't know. Giant waterfowl. <laughs> you know what? We screw, we screw the uh, catapult trebuchet argument. We go with a peasant railgun and. No, I'm not. Thing. I'm not making the peasant railgun again. <laughs> that is not happening. Those poor peasants just standing in line waiting for their six second turn order. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but see, there's a map for you, like the the ideal yeah. map for to put the peasant <laughs> peasant railgun into action. It's pretty much just a straight corridor. <laughs> Doesn't have to be straight. You can have corners. It could. We it don't could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could have corners, it could have little, uh, uh, it's perfectly, uh, right, like, 45 degree angles so you that it can ricochet have, around the... You just can't have, like, bodies of water in between it. Because then you'd have to have peasants that can levitate. Uh, yeah. Or swim. Or swim. Yeah, they could, but, they could probably swim, too. But swimming takes its own action. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, Notice hey. how much you've thought about this. Just Ask yourself why. Just saying. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ask yourself why not. Ah, uh, that's also a good question. Uh, but at any rate, <laughs> at any rate, um, how did we get here? Wh- how did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> I think that we were talking about maps. Pretty sure we were. Yes. yes yeah. We were. Let's. Do so, um, when you started making maps, way, way, way long ago, back when you mm. started playing, really playing Dungeons and Dragons, um. What was the first thing that you really learned about good map making? That it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it's... my When I first started doing it, my maps were kind of things I sketched at the table to play with. It was only It's only in the last couple of years that I started trying to treat them as kind of art. Um, because I've never been much of an artist, so I kind of had to teach myself to draw and to shade and stuff to make them look half decent right right um but you have uh, obviously improved a lot over the last 20 years i, I would hope uh, so yeah i would hope so too <laughs> yeah. um uh, and and some of your maps really do feel like really really elaborate and and really time consuming i guess is the best word for it um how long does your typical monday map actually take you to to draw to lay out the actual drawing um not that long depending on the size of it you're looking at kind of a, maybe an hour or two from drawing to getting it scanned and posted um, okay. what takes the longest is the actual design and figuring out what the hell this map is going to be right right oh. so like Once um you, sorry oh. <laughs> I think you cut out for a minute there. No, but sorry. I'm, I'm okay. I was about to talk over the top of you. I think you both uh, did. We, we both did? <laughs> Either that or you have wax in your ears. Either way. I actually um, noticed, I think I think it's um, some countries that when we're, we're talking to people overseas, uh, we have the biggest issues sometimes, but... Um, because of waves. Uh, let's blame net neutrality. We, we will. <laughs> Don't blame net neutrality. What did net neutrality ever do to you? I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. So, I guess the thing that I'm interested in, uh, having not made maps myself, is you were talking about the layout. Um, mm. What What do you have to consider when you're laying out a map? Um, so, there's a few different things, really. Most of the, like most of the things I draw are for play like i expect or hope that people would take them and use them mm-hmm. at the table rather than just being something pretty to look at um so really you have to you're designing a whole kind of dungeon or encounter space every time um so i'm i'm very interested in building um interesting <clears throat> excuse me spaces for combat encounters and things like that um, but you still need to balance that with it being 
clear enough to be a very quick reference for a DM who's maybe going just going to glance at it to remind themselves, uh, kind of mid session. So you have to draw this balance between it being an illustration with a lot of detail in it and it being almost like a flowchart for the kind of course of an adventure for a games master. Right, right. Because at, at some point you have to take the players into account, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah ideally. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but... Um, I was always worried if I built a map that uh, you couldn't get out of it. I'd build maps. I have that you drawn a few with no entrances by accident. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get, could you still use them? You just have to get really creative on how you get you in. You just say, uh, teleport in. You'll be fine. Could you come in through the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. You come in through the ceiling. Since it there's no map of the ceiling. There's no map of the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Why do they never make maps of the ceiling? I actually did a map with a ceiling on it. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, uh, I reversed the gravity in that section, so I thought, oh, I probably should map the, uh, the ceiling for that bit. Oh, oh my god, how do you conceptualize that? <laughs> <laughs> you, you run your players through it and see what happens, and then just draw it afterwards. Oh, that works. That works. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, that, that's like reverse engineering your map. Oh, yeah. <laughs> realizing that it actually works a concept. <laughs> If you that's... can get the players to do all the work for you and then take the credit, I find that's the best way to run a game. Yeah. People that's think like, you're great. That's like launching a rocket into space and then saying, we'll figure out the blueprints later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can quite do it that way. Yeah, you can. Now, anyway, um, <laughs> see, I would think that a, a map of a roof would just be a blank piece of paper or just like a, a like a black piece of paper, you know, just like completely inked in. And just depends, stick it yeah, up. Depends what you have on the roof and the ceiling. It does. I had like, like a... holes in the roof and chunks oh. of masonry and things like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Or a barbecue. Could put a little or barbecue. Or a barbecue, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever whatever floats your boat. Um now you, now, maps are not necessarily system-specific, but I imagine that you were doing a lot of them for Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. Is there anything specific to the system that they use for Dungeons and & Dragons? And, and I know that there are differences between 3.5, 5, and etc. Um, is there anything about that that you have to take into account when you're drawing a map that players are eventually going to go and explore? Yeah, I mean, it depends... It depends on a few things. One of the things with D and D is, especially fifth edition, is that movement is in kind of increments of five feet. So, kind of one of the conventions of mapping is that you draw a one square equals five feet, so that you know you can just count off. Oh, I've got thirty feet of movement. This space is six squares across. I can get there in one turn of movement. Kind of deal. Um, and when I'm when I'm making a map for to go with an actual adventure that I'm building. Um, one of the things you have to think about is what level are the players going to be going into this, what abilities they have access to. Because if you want to put something on a high ledge and have that be a challenge, well, any party with a fifth level wizard is going to have access to fly, for example. So right. there, are, there are points in the game where things don't aren't a challenge as much anymore, and you have to kind of take that into account while you're building these things. Right, right. So your similar map, you could use the same map, but it's not going to be as big a deal to traverse it if you're level 10 than when you were, like, level 2. Exactly. Like when you play, say, like a Legend of Zelda game, like Phantom Hourglass, you go back to the same dungeons over and over again. But each mm -hmm. time you go back, you have new abilities that let you access new areas or do things in an easier way. Um, I like to build D&D adventures like that myself. Yeah, yeah. It would actually be kind of fun if Link could go through those maps in Dungeons & Dragons. Could you just make Link yeah. as a Dungeons & Dragons character? So I you want a sociopathic silent person who breaks pottery? Yes. And kills yes. chickens? <clears throat> uh, yes. Times, yes. He oh. gets killed yeah. by the chickens. Yeah. You the chickens problems. have their revenge, don't worry. He's actually, and he's actually a ranger and his pet's gonna be a uh, chicken. I think his um, favorite enemy is chickens. Yeah, it is. You know, he would never have been able to defeat Ganon if Ganon was just a giant chicken. Correct. I, I, yeah. I also feel like his pet would just be Navi. Oh, God. 
Na- it would just be Navi, <laughs> and you could listen Hello? to Hey, Hey, listen. Every five seconds, you got to hear that. That would be great. Uh, it, it's always scary that Navi spoke far more than he did. That was kind <laughs> yeah. of. It's kind of sad. Uh, that she or said Tingle. so much, but also so little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she really did. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, he had a lot of uh, fun stuff. He was a musician. Um, he was a sailor. Uh, he, he, he He liked to cosplay a lot. He had all those masks. He was a wolf at one point. He was a wolf. So, you know, lycanthropy. He was, yeah. uh, that's kind of like a druidic. You could turn he was into a time a wolf. traveler. He was a time traveler, right there. Yeah, he's had a, he's had a lot of careers. He has a varied career, and uh, and lots and you know, of home invasions, a lot of home invasions. Lots, yeah, lots, lots yeah. of creeping into all women's bedrooms in the middle of the night in uh, Breath of the Wild. Man, yeah, well, what do you got? I, I haven't played Breath of the that. Wild, but uh, yeah, I haven't played Breath of the Wild, but uh, that sounds like uh, something new for him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> new and exciting adventure. Yeah, deep and exciting adventure out in the wild, breath of the wild, and yeah, you know you get to cook now, and you, and and uh, uh, you know your your weapons your, break now. Oh yeah, your weapons break now. That's uh, always fun. People love weapon breaking. Oh, I was yeah, so excited. It's oh. my favorite. Yeah, I love weapon durability. It's great. Um, and I mean, he had that long storied career where he was just uh, basically mowing the lawn. With his sword, you just go yeah, out and do a field. He goes and back just to whack the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good money making tool. It's a, it's a trade. It's a trade. Yeah. People always absolutely. say, "Get a trade, you're set for life." Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. After a hard day of defeating monsters in High Rule, I really just feel like you know having a side business where I mow the lawn with my master sword. I think that it's a good career yeah. choice for me. He's introducing theater to horticulture. Yeah, he really is, and he's also padding out his resume. Exactly, he's, gotta, he's volunteering, yeah. in fact. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I don't know how we got here from there, no. but um, I like it though. Yeah, I do, I do too. Sometimes, I think that we really sometimes it just happens. Sometimes it just happens all the time, pretty much. Um, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, back back to back to maps. That's oh, what yeah. we were talking about, right? I fr- I remember this. Um, so so back so back to maps. Now, do you do uh, you do a lot of maps of of dungeons? Correct. Okay. Um, now, since the the website and everything is loot the room, do you put your treasures in the dungeons? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, where else just... are you going to keep treasure if not behind a gauntlet of horrible creatures and unimaginable traps? You I would keep hope. mine underneath the floor. That's mm, good because I, I don't think the there's a map of that. that. Yeah, I'm just you just don't... saying. I mean, every adventure expects it to be in a chest at the end of the dungeon. Hide it in the that first room underneath the floorboards. That's probably <laughs> smart. That's, That's probably not smart. A bad idea. Yeah, yeah, that that would be pretty good. Then you would have to have a a whole drawing of the basement. No, you, you just would. have you just have cubbies. Just, it's like just smug, the smuggler's the hatches. Up. It's like the hatches <laughs> on the uh, Millennium Falcon that they hid themselves in because they're oh. for smuggling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. During Force yeah. Awakens, yeah. Uh, in Fifth Ed, do elves still have that thing where secret doors? Automatic immediate detection. No, th- thank the Lord. No, then you can do this because it doesn't count as immediate detection. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But you can't show your players the map because that, that would be immediate detection. Oh, you don't. You don't put it on the map. You just do it in role play. You have it written as oh. a note on the side of the map because if you have something written there, players will spend a half hour out, you know, in game trying to find ways to circumvent and find their way into it. Oh. Yeah, or you you make two maps, one for the DM which has all the secret stuff on, and one for the players that has none of that stuff on. That too. Gotcha. Gotcha. Have you done a lot of those? The the double build. Yeah, I've done a few of them. Um, I'm trying to do more and more of them because the the fun. Yeah. I like secret doors and stuff like that. It's kind of classic D and D. Yeah, yeah, and I mean it's a it's such a great resource for anybody that's going to be playing. Uh, In theory, yeah. 
in, in, th- in theory, <laughs> I would imagine for a new GM that would be really useful. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. That's the aim. Oh, good. Good. Um, now, have you done any maps of uh, towns? I've done a few towns, yeah. Um, not many. Uh, I am doing more because I'm kind of in the middle of building a campaign setting and stuff like that. So I am doing more town maps and things uh, and like overland island maps, things like that. Okay. Uh, try, trying to branch out a bit. Yeah, yeah. Branch branch out into the whole fantasy realm of map making. You yeah. can have a you can have a whole uh, you know uh, geographical layout of uh, of, of, of your entire campaign. That would be fun. I'm guessing. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would yeah. be awesome. Um, I don't. I don't know if you have to really get that detailed on like fields. You can probably, no. you know, go past you know, the fields, really maybe the middle of the ocean. Yeah, it's probably really not. interesting that you bring that up because I've just done a really big post that's going up on the site tomorrow. Oh, all yeah. about that. Really, <laughs> really, like no word of a lie. Yeah, <laughs> that's. That's that's interesting. It's I I feel like I'm telepathic, even though I did not know this. <laughs> yeah. So I, literally finished doing that, came to talk to you guys. Yeah. Perfect. That's great. Cross wavelengths. wavelengths. Yeah. yeah. The wavelengths of corn. The wavelengths of corn. <laughs> yep. Uh, or the fields. the maze lengths of corn. I was just gonna say that. Yeah. I I think that it would be kind of neat though if maybe you did something similar to like a golf course and then you had like a gopher monster that kept popping out of holes in the middle so of things. So you could play D&D Whack-A-Mole. Yes. Yes, basically yeah. the Whack-A-Mole map. Whack-A-Map. I, um, yeah. Sold. <laughs> there you 100% go. 100% in. <laughs> yeah. You're all set. Yeah, if you if you ever need a stupid idea for a map, I'm your person. Now, uh <laughs> Yeah, this is like the fun part where I have to get back to the actual show. Oh, hey, here we go. Uh, yeah, well, that's we're a doing a show. I thought we were just chatting. Yeah, well, we're 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 doing both. At there's, there's a segue about to happen. It's going to be amazing. I want to see it. Oh, bears on segways! <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. That yeah. was so great. That actually happened. Yeah, we there were bears on segways at Clark's Trading Post because they're show bears. What? And they, yeah, yeah they, we have a place up here in New Hampshire that have trained black bears, um, and they taught the bears how to ride segways. I've never even seen a person on a segway. <laughs> I think I saw someone the other day, like down the street segways. here, and I was like, "Is that person riding a segway?" I'm like, "What the fuck is wrong with them?" <laughs> <laughs> well, everything. Everything. Uh, but what happened was one day the bears got out of their cage because they, they figured out how to get the locks off. And then they immediately went over to the Segway Park and they got on Segways and they started riding them around the park. Well, it was closed, mind you. It was closed. That, yeah. that kind of happened with the penguins at a zoo over here. They got out and just walked around the park and then went <laughs> back. They just waddled around. Yeah, yeah, and now they do it every day but with an audience. Oh, well, that's fun. <laughs> It's yeah. a, they they were like, I want to see this stuff too. I never get to. <laughs> we never do the tourist thing as penguins. We never... <laughs> I think there was something, I was reading a story about an octopus that at night could, would get out of its tank while, the, while the, like, the night guard was there or whatever. We'd get out, wait for the guard to go by, get out of its tank into another tank, eat some of the fish, and then go back to its own tank. That's uh, That was Finding Dory. I was going to say, the world is becoming a Pixar movie while <laughs> well, oct- Octopi are actually incredibly smart. That's well, true. yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I guess. As, I, as far as, you know, things about bones go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you think a bone is the qualification for intelligence. <laughs> Well, apparently, some people think the qualification for intelligence is being able to talk, and it's not. No, it is not. Uh, because I know a lot of people that can talk, and they are not intelligent. No, and they talk more than most people. <laughs> more than most people, absolutely. Um, well, that's all going to make for great stuff to put at the end of the show. Yeah, that's good B-roll. <laughs> that's all my B-roll. That's, that's all my bloopers for the outtakes. But, uh, let's see. But now I'm full on that, so I get back to the show. 
Um, so uh, town maps. Yes. About that. Um, About that. Are there certain things that people expect when they get a town map? I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Well, um, I, I just think to myself, like, if I'm going to go into a town, there's probably going to be things that I expect to be there. Yeah, well, I mean, I think if we're talking D&D terms, I think if I was to put a town map out that didn't have a tavern on it, yeah, I'd be a little bit upset. It, yeah, that would be, a, that, would, that would, like, cause a panic. Maybe, yeah, I mean, a lot... maybe it's a dry town, they don't drink. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Oh. Where would but you go for the... missions? A church. Church. You could go. Maybe they're yeah. not religious. <laughs> Town hall. <laughs> Maybe they're an autonomous collective. <laughs> they should. They should. <laughs> what are oh, you gonna God. do now? <laughs> You're just gonna walk through and go to another town. Oh, yeah. okay, that sounds good. I thought there might be like a mission board or something in the middle of town, like help wanted. Do you know I've only <laughs> ever used a mission board in a game once. Really? Yeah, and, and it was the single best session of D&D I've ever played in. I've ever well, it was amazing. What made it so good? Was it the mission board not having to have an NPC tell them what to do? Yeah, I'm, well, I half of my party wasn't going to be there, so I spent a day making this physical mission board with stupid missions all over it. <laughs> and I planned out little adventures for each one, and I put one slip of paper on that said, written in crayon, in like a child's handwriting, that said something like, wanted tasty snacks and then i crossed that out and wrote brave adventurers to go into the cave of almost certain death and cross that out and wrote cave of cuddles please <laughs> see joe and i stuck it on the board and i thought i'm not going to plan anything for that because there's no way they're going to pick that note off the board so of course i put the board in front of them and that's the one they pulled off and then for the next four hours i had to just make shit up and it's the, first, the one of the few times where I've created an NPC, Joe, that my players physically hated. <laughs> one of them nearly hit me, like, in real life, every time I used his voice. Because he was so enthusiastic and so... He just seemed so genuine that he wanted them to go in the Cave of Cuddles and have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> What horrors await you in the Cave of Cuddles? What was in the Cave of Cuddles? There were stone golems, there was a, <laughs> a lava trap, because of course there was, um, and the final room was Joe sitting on a throne of bones with the walls painted in the entrails of all the other adventurers who'd been into the Cave of Cuddles. Oh, beautiful. So, was, uh, so did that work out well for them, or were they all dead from hugs of doom? <laughs> no, they did kill him. Oh, they, they did to kill Joe. Yeah. Oh, th that's good. Well, good. Screw I wasn't going to have them have them die to an NPC who I had literally no stats for. <laughs> you didn't want them to die, and their legend, their to legacy, die. to be dying. Their in the legacy cave of to just die with them. Yeah, that would have been fun. <laughs> that that is not the end of every adventurous tale that they want to tell. <laughs> <laughs> no. that's, that's not the thing they want on the headstone at the end. Killed by Joe, I don't know his last name, he was in a cave of cuddles, just go with it. <laughs> Killed it's... by walking into the world's most obvious trap. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it! We, we had a lot of fun Everybody on the show. Everybody roll new today. characters. <laughs> Everybody roll new characters. You want to go back into the cave of cuddles, loot the body, see if you can be... <laughs> you can get to fight with Joe again? <laughs> you enjoy! It's good times for all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good yeah, that's times. That's the one time I've used the mission board, and I don't think I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you just won't add the one that you don't plan anything for to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The lesson you... I learned from that is just don't give your players choices. <laughs> Railroad them choices. Them. Just, just don't <laughs> let them know that they don't actually have choices. The yeah. illusion of choice. <laughs> the illusion of choice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it certainly is. Um, isn't that called railroading? I think I've no. learned that word. No. 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 It's, it's, I don't know, I don't know. It's called something. It's called something yeah. else? It, it's, co it's something <laughs> it's called the, distinct, uh, but similar the belief in free will, yeah. but not actual yeah. free will. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Oh, okay. Um, I, I feel so much better now.
<laughs> I, I don't have to worry about actually making a choice. No, just don't let them know that's what's happening. Yeah. That's so nice. I, I have a question. Good. When you make maps, aside from like mm-hmm. just the features of what's there, do you ever, like, I know you're making a campaign setting, but do you make a map and they go, well, this event is going on here? Yeah, sort of. Um, especially with the maps that I do kind of on Mondays, I always try to give at least a little bit of history for the place, um, like some kind of plot hooks or something like that, so that a GM can pick it up and say, okay, this is this place, it used to be this, and now these people have moved in, let's see what's happening when the players get there. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Like, I'm thinking, you know, if you make a map, you can go, all right, this town is, like, under siege, or maybe this town is suffering from a sickness or a plague, or, you know, it can kind of dictate why, like, it it can give ideas, it can dictate why things are there. that type of stuff just from yeah, absolutely. one piece of information. Yeah. I mean, like, like for example, if you're mapping a town that was under siege, you'd obviously the map would change depending on kind of defenses that the residents have put into place and things like that. You wouldn't just map a town and say, by the way, it's under siege. <laughs> you want to have a visual representation of that for sure. I see. I see. So, so buildings collapsing, everything's on fire. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. I, I I already like this town <laughs> because because we, I, I always I already like this town because it makes me feel like property values have plummeted and I can buy up real estate. Good time to invest. It is a very good time to invest. Fixer uppers. We like to call it cozy or rustic. <laughs> it's it's a rustic town. And has such history from all of those attacks that have been made on all it. All of the blights and wars, and yeah, there were dragons ab- last week. Ab- 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 absolutely, oh, yeah. it's such a it's such a town with such rich rich history and uh, it's and an memorable and slings, diverse neighborhood and, uh, with excellent nightlife. And it can be yours now for only two thousand gold. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Um, oh, if you could buy an entire town, that'd be great. I mean, man. Ooh, yeah, I, I think I think I should do that. Have you ever made a town that has a for sale sign out in front of it? No, 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 I haven't. Oh man, oh, but I about feel it, like they, should, I feel cause... like there should be like um almost almost like a a, a like a sub development, but it it was like an actual town, and you can just buy anything that's in there because no one's bought them yet. Like a, and so an if you MCD want to, suburb. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. And that would be kind of cool. And if you had I enough mean, money, you, you could buy the castle or the bar. Yeah. If you, you think about anything. it, like nobody really pays attention to the economy in D&D because you can't. Because when you come back to town with 8,000 gold pieces in a chest, <laughs> yeah. you're just going to wreck a local economy. Yeah, oh, if yeah. you were to pay attention to the economy in a game like D&D, adventurers would be the driving force between any community actually surviving or not. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So, You'd How have people it? building. You'd have people building dungeons just to attract adventurers to inject some money into the economy. Yep. It, fact, it's that adventure. How much for a room? Oh, it's silver. Here, here's the gold. Keep the change. What? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the value of a uh, silver plummets. <laughs> <laughs> and... Suddenly, it's, it's like how much is an in worth? You know. If they charge, you know, ten silver a night to stay there, and they have ten yeah, rounds. Uh, yeah, they're charging like three copper pieces for a meal. Right, right. Yeah. So, so, so you're telling me that high fantasy settings do not have realistic economies? <laughs> they have atrocious economies. <laughs> <laughs> I am so disillusioned right now. I know. I I can deal with the dragons. I can deal with laser beam eyes. I can deal with people coming back from the dead. But when you start messing with the economy, I'm going to play a different game. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the realistic. biggest thing in change. Yeah, that's the biggest social change that you can ask for. Yeah. It's I mean, like, uh, how much is a sword in D&D? It's like eight gold. Yeah. That's, and then you uh, want to mad... If you look on the... Um, the D20 kind of SRD wiki page, 
like you can buy a castle for like 500,000 gold which seems like a lot but that's a massively inflated price to take into account the fact that that's the adventurers have gold if you compare that to the price of goods that's just a made up number to stop people buying castles in game yeah no i actually had the idea and i haven't gotten around to doing it in a while because i've been busy and shit i wanted to do a uh like make a module for D D 5e where it's town building because they don't list out any of that stuff like for raw materials and time and money and stuff like that mm. and it doesn't do a good job of that in the game at all like there's no, no cost uh to resource value of wood or stone or labor uh for artisans and stuff like that True. and i was like oh this could be a really cool thing to do uh if done well because i know people who would love to play a D D game where they can build a town oh totally yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it kind of sounds like settlement building in fallout 4 essentially Kind of, except you actually have to pay people to do things. Oh. Or or I can tell them that I'm going to pay them and then just kill them after they're done. If you're chaotic evil. You don't, you don't, you kill them first because then you don't have to pay them or feed them because you raise them as undead. But then, oh, and the um, undead will do your work for you? Yeah, they're mindless servants. Yes, they will. Yeah. I yes, feel I like they're not and as motivated the... as somebody who would be living. They don't have to be motivated. They listen to your commands. <laughs> they just have to be obedient. But then you become the uh, the villain, and then the adventurers turn up and kill you and take all your fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I just feel like there's there's less uh, opportunity for, like, um, you know, for, like, motivational seminars with the undead. I feel like, you know, you'd have more luck if you were yeah, dealing you with the living. A, you, you can't know, have a stand-up. They, they'd they'd be more energetic. Dead. They could get things done quicker. I could give them gold stars. <laughs> they like gold stars. <laughs> I've yeah. heard. Yeah, sure. Why not? Sure, why not? Anywho, um, well, that's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, you, you post your maps on, on Mondays. And then you basically have to take the rest of the week to figure out what you're going to do for another map, <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> um, until recently, yeah, I've just started streaming. Uh, so I tend to get my maps drawn on stream now. So I'm actually sitting on a few weeks' worth of material for once in my life. But yeah, okay. in the past, it's I'd get to Sunday night and go, uh, maps. <laughs> what do I do for maps? <laughs> what do I What do? I do? <laughs> Um, but you have been keeping yourself, uh, occupied with another project that I've heard so, so much about, and, uh, and is, is a thing now, which it is, is if now. I'm saying it correctly, Bullet Storm. Bullet, 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 One Lamb of Shark Storm. Monster that looks like a thing, Storm. <laughs> yeah. Monster. Yeah. I don't know what to compare it to. Toad Face it's like an Wait. armadillo right, a rhyhorn storm shark. <laughs> it is yeah, a little that. rhyhorn. It's it's yeah. a land shark basically, right? It's a lamb shark, yeah. Kind that's of exactly what it is. That's, now, that's exactly what it is. Now, uh the thing I have a question about on that is do mm -hmm. do any of the bullet bullet whatever they're called, the land sharks, um do any of them have Oh, I don't know. The interest in giving out candy grams. Doubtful. Doubtful. Darn. Doubtful. Because I, I feel like that's a missed story opportunity. You know, just one I going mean, around candy gram door to door. That could be the sequel. Sure. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know, uh, since it seems to have uh, really taken off, you know, you have sequel possibilities. Absolutely. Franchise possibilities, I would say. Uh, oh, yes. All sorts of expansions that you can do with it. Yeah. Um, so, so <laughs> Nathan, the extended since universe. you said you're really familiar with it, how about we let Chris tell our listeners and me uh, mm. more about what Bullet Storm is? Since yes. Nathan, you knowing all the information about it is great. <sighs> that doesn't help everyone else know what the hell we're talking about. I think it's obvious that I do not. I just say I do. 
So, uh, b- but I totally do, which is why you know Chris is going to explain it to me now. <laughs> why, why, um, what, why did you want to do Bullet Storm? Um, because it was fun, I guess. I've they're one of my favorite monsters, and they don't get used very often in games that I've played in. Um, and I basically wanted to make Jaws, but in Dungeons and Dragons in a field. <laughs> so that's what I did. I took land sharks and I put them in a field and I set up this town that was about to have a harvest festival, but there's been attacks and the mayor wants to carry on with the festival, but the head of the town guard wants to shut it down and that's where the party come in and go on a big monster hunt. Oh, I gotcha. And that's I the gotcha. adventure. Oh. How many bullets I guess that's how I'm gonna say it now. Yeah. Uh, are are there? Is this is this like a? Well, I guess Bullet Storm says it all. There's a, it's there's a it's a bit storm. of a misnomer. There's um, yeah. so one of the fun things about Bullets, however you want to say it, the kind of lore of them um, across the history of D and D is one of the one of the continuing things is that nobody's ever seen their calves or seen how they breed. Um, and I wanted to write a low level adventure with land sharks. So I made these, I started up some Bulet calves. And then I decided that I didn't want to do a low-level adventure, actually. I wanted to do a mid-level adventure. Let's throw a real Bulet in as well. Um, so basically this thing has come to town having just had a brood. Mm. And uh, it's hunting and it gets interrupted. So there's there's the main Bulet and there's a few of its calves as well. And I've... You can scale it, you can add more if you want. I don't recommend taking them out, because where's the fun in that? Right, right. Okay, cool. Now, um, I'm, I'm sure Alex has a lot of questions, because he doesn't know much about Bulettes. <clears throat> but uh, I did have one interesting question. I'm going to say it's interesting. Shut up, Alex. About, <laughs> ab- about when, you're, when you're actually making an adventure... Okay. Yeah. So, so when you're building an event, and that's exactly what you did. You you built an adventure. Um, what kind of things? What kind of things do you have to keep in mind that the players and the GM are going to absorb when they actually run it? Um, so the main thing for me with published adventures is because writing an adventure for yourself to run at the table versus one for publication is a whole different ball game. Mm. When you write something for yourself, you can just make the loosest of notes and you know how your mind works and you know how you're going to fill that stuff in. Um, when you're writing for other people, you have to be very careful to spell everything out. Um, so one of the things, one of the challenges I had was in trying to kind of present it in a way that makes it almost trivially easy for a DM to run um, and for players playing it to know kind of what's going on. Um, I've kind of, Lost track of that thought a little bit along the way. <laughs> <laughs> it happens when you have a, a Bulet Storm. Also, yeah, that's it. it, it's called Bulet Storm because I assume you didn't want to get sued by the creators of Sharknado for Land Sharknado. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, correct, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Um, they didn't have any God, money Land anyway. Sharknado well, would have been a great name. <laughs> 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 um, well, there's that's the sequel. <laughs> yeah. Was I don't remember. I don't know if it was that or if it was something else. I saw something that had variants on bullets. Um, yeah, that had that had some kind of lower um, challenge rating ones in it. I haven't seen any proper variants on them, but I'd, it I'd wasn't like different. It wasn't necessarily lower CRs, but they were like uh, I don't remember where I saw it, but I saw it on Twitter, and it was the bullet. You have your normal bullet, and then you have like a. Uh, like a necrotic bone bullet. Oh, that sounds oh, awesome. Whatever. And then there were so, like different types of bullets, and I was like, this is interesting. And I wasn't sure if that was this. Apparently, it's not. But you should try and find that because then you can have yeah, like, definitely. Very, you could like team up with them and do like variant bullet bullshit. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Did, did you see that quite recently? Because uh, while I was working on this. Trash Mob Minis and Printable Heroes were both working on paper miniatures of Bulets at the same time. I f- was it wasn't well. that long ago. It might have been a oh, couple okay. months. At the most, a couple months. Cool. That's always always funny that stuff pops up all over the place. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, 
It it is. Um, all I can think of now is that I want an armored bullet that I can ride around like a horse. I is that weird? I don't think that'd be comfortable. Also, when it starts burrowing, <laughs> you're screwed. But it does have a fin that I could hold on to. Are you gonna ride it and be like, yeah? Yeah, it's it. Yeah, I, and th- you know what? It feels like an '80s like hair metal guitar rift is behind me. Okay, Trey, you calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! My side of the bullet. Yeah, <laughs> my side of the bullet. <laughs> Sapphire bullets of pure love. Oh man! <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now I just now I just like want to make variant monsters. Just because. Based on Atreyu songs. <laughs> no, no, no. Wow. Also, I was totally not talking about the band. Just for the record. No, I know. In case, in case Nathan missed that. <laughs> what what was that from? I know it's from uh, never Neverending ending Story. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking it was, but I didn't want to say it. Because I haven't seen it, was, it in so the, long. The kid's name was Atreyu, and he was writing uh, that's the right, dragon that's right. dogs. Falcor. Yeah. Um, on a on a side note, is it weird to anybody else that the never ending story is only like a minute and thirty seven min uh an hour and thirty seven minutes long? I'm very definitely ended. Yeah, and <laughs> very definitely until a never ending story two, which was also about yeah. that long, and then then very much also ended. They need to Didn't do a third it feel one like it went on forever just, when like, you were a kid time though. Travel paradoxes. Oh, that would work. You know they're they're bringing everything back anyway. They might as well bring back Never Ending Story, right? Yeah, a- absolutely. If they're going to bring back Dark Crystal and Star Wars and Back to the Future and all of those, might as well bring back Never Ending Story. And uh, and then Atreyu the band can do the, <laughs> soundtrack, do the soundtrack for Atreyu in the movie. Atreuception. Atreuception. There you go. And that's the and title that's how, of Never Ending Story. Yeah. And, and there is how you get the Never Ending Story. You just never get your kick. <laughs> or, or, or your kick stand, I guess, because it's a band. That's a thing, right? Anyway. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. How long uh, do you usually feel it, it takes to get through a campaign like Beulet Storm? How long are you figuring? Um, so this is kind of a side quest. Um, I originally intended it to be a really short adventure, like three, two, three hours. Uh, and then I did the kind of rookie mistake of putting this massive investigatory go and ask people questions section at the beginning of it. Um, mm. so it's probably about a four or five hour adventure if you kind of engage with all the NPCs and stuff like that, um, which to me is one session of D&D, basically. Right. Well, that sounds about right. <laughs> right. Right. So theoretically, you could run it as a one-shot if you had a long night. Yeah, it's absolutely intended to be a one-shot. There's only actually two combats, two combat encounters in it. Um, And kind of as a guideline, you're looking about half an hour to an hour per combat encounter, depending on how big it is. So, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, I was really interested in it just because, uh, I don't know if you know about this, Chris, but I'm not that familiar with Dungeons & Dragons. Or really role playing or games. Oh no! In general, you, you can't tell. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but I, I I was not familiar with a bullet at all, uh, let alone have a cam or or I, I guess a, a a mission, a quest hmm. that revolved around it. Um, is there something specific about the bullet that really? drew you to it because there's some there the bestiary in dungeons and dragons has some really strange monsters in it it does um i've always liked them because as i'm not a very kind of tactically minded person like when i play <laughs> games i'm not i just want to get in and hit things when i play D and <laughs> don't think strategically right. um and that's kind of what that monster is all about. It burrows underground, it bursts up beneath people and eats them, and it just keeps going until everything's dead. And <laughs> I, I like that in a villain. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's good. You know, it would be fun if you had one that had, like, one of the snidely wit flash mu- uh, mustaches and kept trying to tie yes. you to tracks or something. Of course. That would be amazing. Give that it a little be... monocle. 
give it a monocle, top hat. That'd be great. I think it might lose all that in the burrowing, but... You're yeah. suddenly making Mr. Peanut a Bulette. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bulette. It, it, yeah. Oh, man, you know, I, want a, I want a pet Bulette now, and I want to name him Bueller. Oh. Bueller. Bueller. That, that way, when he's uh, whenever he's underground, you can be like, Bueller. 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 Oh, and it can sound like the Jaws theme. <laughs> Bueller. 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 Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Yeah, that works. Yep. And That's then good. Just pop totally. up and just eat people and be like, good job, Bueller. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get John Williams on it right now. Yep. Um, I think that it would really benefit Mr. Peanut if he was a Bueller because it would be much easier to harvest peanuts. Because you have to go under the ground. The whole tree. Do peanuts grow on trees? Yeah. Um, I, I feel I should know that. All right, then. Yeah, <laughs> you have to you have to think a little bit outside the box because they're underground. So it would be, or, or maybe you just eat them that way. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think Bulets actually eat stuff underground, or do they just use it as a means of travel? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> we solved we solved the Bulet mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, because I mean, humans aren't underground, but I do imagine no. they enjoy a tasty human tra- uh, treat. Oh yeah, yeah, I I can understand. You've got They keep a balanced <laughs> diet. They like to you know square meals, mage, thief, yep. fight a cleric yep. as a nice square meal. <laughs> There's a lot to them. There's they're they're very complex. More than the they have a very complex society. Of they're deceptively simple. Land- <laughs> they're, 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 it's a very complex land shark society that they've built up. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's uh, that that almost makes them more terrifying. Um, they uh, they never crossbred those with dragons. Not yet. No. Um, no. I've, I've th- crossbred sharks with dragons. Um. How did okay. That go? In real life. Uh, no, it was the death shark <laughs> from the Dungeon of Doom that Anakin and I made. Oh, right. It was a, it was a uh, used the template uh, for a half dragon, so it was a half dragon black shark. Oh. That, but it, that, the, that, the, the, the that, floor that, that it swam in was made of uh, the same stuff as gelatinous cubes. Excellent. Oh. So the floor was basically like a giant pit of jello. Several hundred feet across by several several hundred feet across with a bridge going over it, but the bridge was full of pitfall traps or trap doors. So there were two of these sharks in there, and they are resistant to acid. They don't take damage from it because dragon. Uh, they have a breath weapon, and they're fucking sharks. <laughs> That so old chest is amazing. So they swim through the acid like they don't give any cares because they don't. And then I had them jump like up over the bridge to freak the players out. <laughs> yeah. One amazing. of the players fell in. I don't know how he didn't die. I think it was a homebrew <laughs> fucking knight character or something. But um, yeah. Sharks. Half dragons. They're good. You can take that out of the show we've talked about it before. I'm just. Yeah, crossbreeding hey, sharks is fun. Or yeah, dragons. yeah, it sure is. And uh, in no way will it end up like the fly, uh, but with sharks. Um, no, you know what you need no. to crossbreed a dragon with, like butterflies. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> you really should. I read. I oh, read something make a dragonfly. Yeah. Yeah. I was re- I read something somewhere where someone had uh, made it so butterflies could like breathe fire or something like that in one of their games, and so only some of them did, and so anytime players would see them, they'd freak the fuck out because <laughs> they weren't sure if it was just a normal butterfly or if this butterfly was going to become a raging inferno. And I was like, that's, that's amazing. E- that's evil. That is evil, um, and also really unfair to butterflies, um, and and dragonflies. Because I would have thought dragonflies would do that instead, but uh, maybe that's just too on the nose. Uh, 
Chris, have you seen anything strange like that in your campaigns over 20 no. years? No. Actually, well, no. Well, With, there you yeah. go. <laughs> I, I have nothing more to add. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have that effect on people. <laughs> quite quite, uh, quite uh, a lot. And yet, and yet, for some yeah. reason, people keep wanting to come on our show. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they really do. Um, I think uh, bribery helps. Uh, so, anyway... Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, now, we, we, we did talk a little bit about the idea of doing a, a, a sequel to, to Bullet Storm, and whether that's Land Sharknado, I don't know. But um, are, you, are you planning on doing other uh, modules, other, other quests that uh, you can put out to people in oh, the yeah, future? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, cool. I, I'm kind of taking a break from doing modules. I've Got a lot mm. of kind of other supplements and things on the go that I'm going to be releasing, uh, but this this is the first adventure module that I've released, and uh, I kind of bit off a little more than I could chew with it, so I'm taking a little bit of a break. But yeah, definitely adventures. I love writing them; they're really fun. I love putting them together, and I love seeing people kind of use them and hearing about what happened when people played in them as well. It's really satisfying, and it's really great. So, yeah, absolutely. When uh, Have you gotten any uh, people giving you stories from Bullet Storm so far? Not stories yet, no. I've had a few people saying they really enjoyed it. One guy uh, played it as a solo adventure with his is it like eight- or nine-year-old daughter um, oh. and had a really good time with it. I haven't had any stories as such yet, but... Um, Hopefully they'll be coming soon because I know people are playing it, which is great. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's a uh, it. It feels like. Well, I, I'm actually surprised that the that his eight year old daughter wasn't terrified. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like a cool eight year old. Yeah, you know, some I mean, people I, can just I deal was with about sharks. that age when I, I started playing. D &D, I would be freaked so. out. <laughs> um, I really would. Uh, you, you, you have a land shark come out of the ground and it's all over. Uh, I, yeah. I'm getting up. I'm going home. Game over, man. Game over. Game over, man. So I was wondering, as you said, you're taking a break, but, um, being that you've made this and you have, I'm sure plenty of other ideas. Is there some idea back in, in your brain somewhere that you would absolutely love to get done? at some point in time for like a module or a map idea with a module or just in general. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this one came out of me wanting to run a D and D game of Jaws. Um, I've had this, in fact, I have run it for my players, but I want to write up um, alien in kind of a bathhouse. So I have this map drawn already of a bathhouse that sits on top of uh, kind of natural hot springs and there's metal vents going to every room that circulate warm air. And then, yeah, drop a xenomorph or two into that and see what happens. But, you know, not an actual xenomorph. It would be similar but legally distinct from a xenomorph. <laughs> it's a doppelganger. It's fine. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think that would be a really... Well, I know that's a fun adventure to run, so I think that's, if not next on the list, that'll definitely be happening because, yeah. yeah. You know what's interesting about being at a bathhouse? Go on. Typically, your adventurers are not armed. Correct. That, that is half or pants, or or, or, or armored. Yeah, or or underweared. And if they are yeah, they armored and they go down where it's yeah. hot and steamy, yeah, not, not fun. No, I, I I think that that actually makes it more terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. As be, yeah. Doubt. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just so minding what, my own business in the bath, and then Xenomorph came up and ate my head. Yeah, definitely it, not a face hugger appeared, and it was all over. Yeah, that uh, that does sound uh, terrifying. So you were saying that doppelganger that would be the D and D equivalent? Is that um, what you were saying? Doppelganger are, are exactly what you expect. They're shape changers that take it the form of generally humanoids. I, I think they can take other forms too, maybe. But they basically. Uh, steal people's identities, I believe. Ah, okay. So they have to steal the identity of a of a xenomorph, basically. Ge no, generally, I, uh, I think they're neutral aligned. Uh, but, I've never actually, um, I've never used a doppelganger in a game, actually. 
I've, I've never I, used them. If I did either. the alien adventure, I probably wouldn't use them because I'd just start up some nasty jumping, impregnate people's heads monster, probably. That that's kind of what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. You can actually use uh, in the old games, anyways. You could use doppelgangers as a player race. You could. Yeah. That I don't make... know, maybe you still can. I'm sure somebody's done one on DMs Guild or something. Uh-huh. You you should do something sometime where everyone in the party is like a doppelganger of someone in the party. Oh God. But imagine? they don't know it. Like, they're all doppelgangers of the real party. That sounds oh. like playing, like, The Resistance or Coup, but with d d It actually sounds really fun. You have them all play as doppelgangers fun. of the party itself. So they are <laughs> doppelgangers of real people. But then they go to a place uh, where the party has been, and the people all know the people from the party. So you have to try and act like the person that you're imitating. That could be fun. That could be really fun because, like, you're acting strange. You're like, am I acting strange? Am I? Oh, shit. I don't think I'm acting strange. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. Now, now here's the thing, though. The Shyamalan twist at the end is actually the town was just full of doppelgangers, and your party is fine. Yeah, I mean, you'd have them check, they'd have to check for the little dot under their eyelid, make sure they're not actually doppelgangers, you know. Mm-hmm, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I feel like a town full of doppelgangers would basically be like Westworld, but for a fantasy setting. Like, you could just bring them back. Yeah. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Could work. That would Every, be cool. Yeah, every day it just resets. That would be pretty sweet. Groundhog's oh, that'd Day? That would be trippy. Yeah, Groundhog yeah. Day. Yeah, it's just Groundhog's Day. Actually, I'm listening to Adventure Zone, and they have a, a campaign that they're running right now. Uh, that arc is um, 11th Hour, and that is exactly what... It, it basically is Groundhog's Day. Like, they only have from 11 to 12 to figure out why the town explodes, and then they all die, and it goes back to 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they do a Zelda game like that? It was called Majora's Mask. Majora's yes, Mask, they did. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was the moon crashing into the village. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then, you no, know, it also be a really fun, uh, fun rip to do is the episode of Doctor Who, where the Doctor, uh, where Matt Smith gets killed by the astronaut. Oh yeah, that would be kind of cool too. Uh, I'm a really terrible British person, and I don't watch Doctor Who. It's okay. So that reference is lost okay. on me, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, yeah. Nathan, do you remember it enough to explain it? Um, I'm trying to remember who the astronaut was. It, yeah, the astronaut was River Song. Right. Who was right. also on the beach and also at the time was uh, being made in, in Amy's stomach on the beach. Because time travel. Right, right, because she was actually her daughter, but there's the... Wasn't that pretty much bootstrap principle at a certain point? Like, didn't... it? What Wasn't she kind of responsible for her own birth in some way? Um, like, she was a factor. I don't remember. It's been a while. I need to rewatch it. Essentially what happens is Matt Smith gets killed by a person in an astronaut suit who is also sitting on the beach while her mother is pregnant with her on the beach. Yep. Wow. Yeah, yep. it's 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 like wait, what? Like when you put it all together, like that entire scene is like fucked. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then the astronaut kills the doctor but doesn't actually kill the doctor because he's inside the astronaut suit. Right. Wait. No. Yes. He... No. Is it? Oh, no, he's in his own head. Because the body that he had on the beach wasn't his real body. That's right. Because he was an android. Yeah, he was the machine, and he was in his (laughs) own head. That's right. I can't believe you don't watch Doctor Who. This makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, My uh, my girlfriend does, so I'll have to get her to explain this to me, because... 
what? Yeah, <laughs> just, uh, just, just ask to... her about the impossible astronaut. Yeah, I, I will do that. I'm writing that down right now. And it, she, it's actually the, the, that, that, one, that one arc right there is actually really good. Cool. Yeah, um, I watched a bit of um, Eccleston Doctor Who, and I haven't seen much since then. He wasn't was bad, really bad, but after his season, it got better. Well, yeah, I heard that. Um, yeah, because another tennis. one. If you want, if you want a fun uh, idea for another, like a module or something, watch the episodes um, "Silence in the Library in the Forest of the Dead." Oh, that's cool. then, okay. then you will have your players literally jumping at shadows. Yep, excellent. Because the shadows will eat them. Yes, amazing. And yeah. there are shadow monsters in D anD D as well. So yes, this is true. That's half the work done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these ones where the shadows were alive, basically, like they wouldn't come after you, but they would. You know, if you were in the shadows, you could be infested with them. Cool. Yeah, and they basically have this. They're called the Vashta Narada, and the whole idea is that basically, oh, they live in all shadows. It's just that in this particular place, they're actually highly concentrated so that if you step into the shadows, uh, they will basically consume you like piranhas before you can, can blink. So, awesome. so that's not good. That sounds horrific. It, it, it really yeah. was. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> and they, they, really, they really were like one of, the, one of the best Doctor Who villains and the other thing is that they mo- their motivation is so so purely uh, organic. They're hungry. That's it. They want to eat stuff. Awesome. Pretty much what they want. That's that's relevant to my interests. Yeah. Yes. Th- they're hungry, I and you happen. They're hungry, <laughs> and you're in their forest. Yeah. They're hungry, and your food. Yeah. And and uh, yeah. and there's nobody else around, so you're it. They've eaten awesome. everything else. And it's a library. Oh, I know where I'm. I yeah. know where I'm getting all my ideas from. From that. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. By the time you get through like season uh, three or four, like by the time you get through the tenant years itself, I mean you'll have campaigns aplenty. There was the uh, there was the one where they were on the Diamond World. Remember where he was on the train? Yep. 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 And it was like the. The some kind of phantom that was outside the train, they stopped the train, and so he's dead in the water with all of these strangers that he doesn't really know, but now there's like a spirit that's taken over the body of one of them and is trying to turn everybody else against him, and they can't go outside the train because they're going to die instantly from exposure to radiation, and they can't figure out how to start the train, and now everybody's distrustful of him because whatever's in this other person is trying to convince them that he's the bad guy you realize that would be a really bad one because players would just kill people off yeah, would just kill they everybody just kill everyone they would they just kill just, everybody they just, they'd be, uh, it's not me let's kill everyone else that's okay it's a mental note yeah. for me <laughs> um <laughs> yeah if in doubt assume Wait. that your players are going to try and kill everything you put in front of them uh, yeah pretty much that wouldn't stop me yeah I'd still put no. them on the train. <laughs> I'd still put them on the train. <laughs> Anywho. Um, <laughs> what? So now that you've actually written the module, I'm, I'm going to try to get back on track. It's going to be fun to try. <clears throat> so, uh, Chris, now that you've actually uh, written Bullet Storm, what uh, lessons do you take away from that that you'll use in future campaigns? Oh, that's a good question. I get those once in a while. <laughs> um, I learned, I mean, a lot of what I learned isn't kind of stuff that I can, uh, it's stuff that I learned about the way that I work and stuff like that, um, rather than like things where I could say, oh, if you're going to write a, a module, you should do this or you should do that. Um, I learned a lot about how to how I go about kind of organizing these kind of things and how, how the ways that I need to work in order to be the most productive, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as actually building adventures, I don't know if I learned anything from Be Like Storm that I didn't... That sounds like a real egotistical thing to say. Mm. I don't know if I learned anything <laughs> that I didn't kind of already know just because I've been 
playing the game so long. Sure. Um, certainly, I had to take into account a lot of things that I wouldn't normally take into account. Like, when I build adventures for my party, like for my group, for example, I, I know that, like, what those characters are capable of and what kind of things I can throw against them. So the whole idea of kind of balance and challenge ratings kind of goes out of the window a little bit when I build for my game. So it was it was interesting to have to go and make sure that, like, these combat encounters are balanced for this level party, and, you know, this isn't just going to immediately kill the group of whatever poor DM tries to run it, because that would hmm. suck. Yeah. Frankly. <laughs> So, the... Yeah, I had to take into account the system a bit more than I maybe would when I'm building an adventure for my game, for sure. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to be the GM that like just all of a sudden uh, kills off your party. No. No. Nope, Unless sure. you do want to be the GM that... Yeah. Unless you're Alex. I don't kill off my party. <laughs> We've been over this a hundred times. <laughs> the party they do, they do stupid shit. And I don't stop them. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, I guess we can go with that. If they die, <laughs> it's not my fault they didn't yeah. run away. They can always run away. I, I they feel, never do. I, I feel like it's a good thing that Dungeons & Dragons probably doesn't have a court system. <laughs> because I don't know if this would hold on. <laughs> Maybe there is a legal hey, system. You just haven't explored all it. All I did was show you where the dragon's lair was. You're the ones who waltzed into it on fire, <laughs> singing. <Yeah. laughs> and now you're all dead. Yeah. So congratulations. Roll your, nope, roll your new characters. It's going to be great. <laughs> Everyone's going to be happy. Um, <laughs> That's terrific. Uh, are are there any maps for Loot the Room that you're hoping to do in the near future? Something that you haven't done before that you're really looking forward to? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, I really like... Um, I, do you guys know who Dyson is? Um, Dyson is a cartographer. Uh, one of the big kind of D&D map makers on the internet, if you like. Um, and he did this big project... I can't remember how long ago it was now, but he basically did like a floating island map that is beautiful. Um, and I would I would love to try doing something like that. Whether I have the skill set to do something like that right now, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I can certainly try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love floating islands. Uh, and the, uh, the other cool thing about it is that uh, it really defines your playing space. Yeah, like they're not definitely. getting off that. Maybe they are. No, not Maybe without jump not off. Not without falling. You know, players yeah. are weird. Um, <laughs> that would be me. I'd ha I'd think of a character that has wings. Get off the island. Yeah. But that would be a bad idea, probably. There's so much fun to be had on those. Uh, so okay, that's cool. Um, Alex, uh, Alex. You were talking a little bit about the idea of uh, what was I saying? Something. I was talking about something. <laughs> I was I I was deep in thought, and now I'm not. I don't think. <laughs> you're you're kind of rambling. Good. Why don't you talk? Because you don't shut up. <laughs> shut, shutting up. Mouth zipped. Go. So what were you trying to ask me? <laughs> See, this is why I keep talking. <laughs> well, you just said you were trying to you you were trying to ask me something, and now you don't. Oh no, 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 no! At, at the beginning, we were going to talk some. We were going to talk about something. You and Chris said that you wanted to talk about something that was involved with Bullet Storm. Layout. 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 There you go. Would you like to talk about layout? Would you like to talk about layout? Would you like to build a snowman? No. <laughs> no, no, just, just let it go. <laughs> Always, absolutely. Anyway, yes, layout. What was your question about layout? Uh, just in general, uh, Fiddleback had actually said we should talk to him about layout. So, Appa apparently, you do good layouts. <laughs> well, cool. <laughs> How? Yes, I do. Next question. How? 
<laughs> yeah, I did a big um, I did a big post a few weeks ago about the state of layout in the kind of RPG industry that I think ruffled a few feathers um, because I basically said that I hated the fact that layout hasn't really changed in 20, 30 years. Um, one of the issues I have when I pick up a module, because I run a lot of I run a lot of things off the DMs Guild, so kind of PDF modules, and my laptop is really small. So if I'm trying to read these modules and run a game because I haven't printed them out, I have to scroll constantly because everything is always laid out in like two columns on a A4 page, and you end up having to scroll up and down and up and down and flipping through pages to... Um... You end up fighting with the module to find what you need a lot of the time. So one of the things that I tried to do with Bullet Storm, Bullet Storm, however we're saying it now, mm. um, I wanted to take advantage of the fact that <clears throat> people are going to be reading it on the screen and that in a PDF you can kind of hyperlink things and you can do a lot of interactive stuff that you couldn't do with a paper printed module. Um, and for some reason no one really seems to be doing that, designing modules for use on screens with digital tools. Um, I think that's prob. I mean, yeah, that's what I did with Violet Storm. That's probably why Fiddleback said we should talk because I know mm. he's been doing kind of messing about with stuff like that as well. So you did things like clickable uh, links that'll bring you right to a spot and or, and and things of that nature, I assume. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like one of the guiding principles that I went into it with was that when you're running a combat, quite often you end up flicking back and forth between like the map and the description of what's in the room and the stat blocks for the monsters. So I wanted to come up with a way to present absolutely everything that you need to run an encounter on one page, so you never need to flick back and forth, basically. Even I, going I as like far, that. like some of the pages have initiative trackers on them and stuff like that as well, like form fillable things. So do you do that, uh, as you just said, form fillable things, but do you also do that with, like, links? Yeah. Um, so rather than having, like, in the... I, I put this out with a few different versions. I had principal version, like, formatted like a normal book, and then I had the digital version, and I did things like... Um, like, big icons to, for the, like, different locations, so you could just jump straight to that location... And things like, um, yeah, like the form fillable and different um, layers that you could hide and reveal on the page itself that gave you different information about different things. And yeah, hyperlinks between them, stuff like that. Um, what else did I do with it? Lots of stuff. <laughs> I actually, I actually like that idea of layers, where if you've got the f page has. Um, the event like the the text of what's going on and you say instead of different pages it's you you can add layers you said yeah exactly so you can be like all right here's a layer that gives you the map yeah and then exactly. you can so have I a layer have... that goes this this layer has all of the monster details for everything that's going to be on this encounter correct that's right. exactly i it. like that 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 is actually you're right where in the digital age a lot more people are going to like tablets for books, yeah. like, I have a friend who's got just an RPG library on his tablet. That's all he uses it for. Um, exactly. Because they're more convenient and generally less expensive than having a pile of books in front of you. Um, they totally. also don't break your back. Yep. When you're trying and to carry 50 And they don't take 50, up 50 all books. the space on the table and you don't <laughs> pick them over when you go to get pizza. And Yeah, exactly. Right, you spill pizza on your book and you're screwed. You get on the screen, you just kind of wipe it off. Yeah. Don't know you're sp fine. spilling pizza, but, you know, it's... it's, it's <laughs> it um, happens. Jesus. But no, I, I, I like that, because if I've got my phone in front of me and I've got a PDF and it goes, oh, well, I can have these different tabs for... Like, I need to see the monster, and I'm looking yeah. at the monster. Then I can just quickly switch that to me. Exactly. Is super handy. Like you're right. We should be doing that. Like as an industry and as consumers, that should be something we should push for because yeah. there's no reason that it shouldn't happen if it's if I assume you're not by trade a 
person that does this like for a living like no. layout design for pdfs that's not your like no job. God, no. so i've if... done i've done a little bit of freelance work but certainly no but like, nothing like this before so if you can figure it out and it's not something you've been like trained as a profession to do it i assume is fairly easy to figure out yeah i mean this some of the stuff that i tried to do in this hasn't worked quite as i would like it to and that's just a feature of me not really knowing what i was doing when i went into it um and part of partly because a lot of the interactive elements we're still waiting for technology to catch up in a way with pdfs um a lot of people if you're not using like the most up-to-date version of adobe reader you're not going to be able to use some of the interactive elements which is a shame um but i think there's definitely if someone was really good with like markup and css and stuff like that you could do something like this with like a HTML5 app or something, probably trivially easily, and it would be awesome, and everyone would be able to use it. I think the biggest issue with things like, as you said, updating Adobe is that when people uh, get things on their computer or on their their devices from the internet, they're like, "Oh, I have this thing. It works for what I'm doing," and they don't think to look for upgrades and they don't look yeah. for newer versions or other versions of a similar product that can do better things. They go, this is what I'm used to. This is what I'm using. I'm not going to change it because I don't need to. Yeah. I think that's right. It's it's like the difference between use your, all your uh, computers used to be loaded up with Microsoft word. And it's like, well, I don't know any other word processing programs that are this good, so why should I go and find one? This works fine. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I'm also realizing it's kind of nice when I don't talk. Is it? (laughs) It's the most comprehensive that we've been in the last half hour. (laughs) This is is true. When you don't talk, (laughs) we apparently don't go off the rails as much. (laughs) That's good. Then again, I'll just you, leave the room. <laughs> you did. You did listen to the uh, the talk I had with Breeze Grigus uh, about uh, the Aegis Kickstarter the second time. That's right. I mean, did we go off the rails like a billion times? Nope. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's that's good. Well, you know, that's fine. I I don't have to be here. You you keep going. I'll just <laughs> I'll just I'll just go get something to eat. We're fine. Um. Oh yeah, that's always good. Well, back off the rails we go. No, uh <laughs> I actually uh yeah, woo. Um Chris, I'm going to subject you <laughs> I'm going to subject you to one of one of my big questions that I'm always okay. fond of of asking. And I think the one that I want to ask you is uh it, it sounds real simple, but it's not. Um why do games matter? Oh, that's a good question. You're asking this one again to like everyone. No, so I, I you, asked do you mean? One last time. Do you mean games in general, or do you mean specifically kind of role playing games? No, just games in general. Like why we, you know, anything that we play. Why does it matter that we play those games? Hmm. There's a, f- a few, a few of the there put my teeth back in and actually <laughs> maybe able to physically answer this question. <laughs> I think games are important because, like, specifically with role-playing games, they've kind of come from a tradition of, um, like, oral storytelling and communal storytelling um, that I, th- I mean, I, I've been a kind of creative arts student for the past, the creative arts, creative writing student for the past decade, so obviously I'm interested in storytelling and stuff like that. Um, I think by kind of playing games together, we build community and as well as building that kind of sense of community, we also build kind of community problem solving becomes a thing when you play games, especially if you play cooperative games. Um, I think it's very easy, especially now that everyone has the internet and doesn't necessarily interact with people face to face a lot of the time. I think it's important to get around the table with a group of people and play a game, solve a problem, or act out a murder fantasy that doesn't involve all your friends being dead. You know? Yeah. 
That's probably uh, healthy, I guess. Yeah. A psychologist might say it differently, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I ain't one but, of them. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no. The the idea of storytelling is something that's uh, that goes back before we had games. So, I uh, yeah. I totally get that um, as an answer. And and no, Alex, that's not the same question that I asked the last time. Well, I mean, it is the question you asked Jeff Didmall. Uh, no, I asked him what makes a game memorable. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. You know how that works. Nope. I have I have like a handful of questions that uh that people just kind of like pause for a moment and have to say where'd that come from? <laughs> Those are the ones I ask at the end of the episode. Oh, um, does that make it Chris, the end of the episode? I don't know. Uh, is there <laughs> is there something you had to ask? I was just asking. Is there something you just you just I'm... dumped that on me. <laughs> no, I'm just say I just say I usually ask that toward the end of the episode. I I if couldn't you edit it. You can make it the end of the episode. Exactly, everything can be the end of the episode. I have the ability <laughs> to do that, Alex. You get an end of the episode, and you get an end of the episode. <laughs> Everybody gets an end of the episode. For Look you. under your seats. <laughs> <laughs> There's that's, that's the end of the episode. That's a different yeah. end. <laughs> Everybody gets the end of the story. Um, did you have uh did you have any other questions about uh layout that you wanted to ask while we're we're here, Alex? Mm, not specifically. We I, I mean it, it wasn't like we didn't go crazy into it, but I mean he didn't have to. I mean, right. that, that's all super important and really smart stuff to say. <laughs> and you wrote you wrote a, a blog piece on it. If you want, we can link that in the show. Feel free. Yes, and, um, we can do that. I'm, I'm sure yeah. that would be nice if other people could be like, where did he write this? I want to see it. Yeah. One thing we I can... will say, if you're going to link it, is I got a lot of shit off people for shitting on the uh, home brewery. Which is, I don't know if you know the home brewery, it's like an nope. online PDF generator that kind of makes things look like Wizards of the Coast products uh, that a lot mm. of people use for DMs Guild. And a lot of people who read my post about blog design got the impression that I hate it and I need it to go away and that I was kind of taking a dump on it. That's not the case. Let me clarify that. That is not the case. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go and read that and then decide that you're going to shout at me for dumping on the home brewery i will ignore you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, good day sir i said yeah. good day we are done here <laughs> sir all the time um yeah no we we, we had talked about with the room and, and bullet storm and we had talked about layout um chris was there anything else that's coming up that you wanted to discuss um could vote for me in the annies that would be cool Yes. Yeah. Uh, by the time this show is out, the Ennies are voting. It's going to be close, though. So. You could have hypothetically Damn. voted for me in the past for the Ennies. That would have been cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, in ca- and in case you Boy. won the Ennies, congratulations on winning your Ennie. I didn't yeah. win the Ennie, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, no, we'll, we'll do two. We'll do one where it's like, <laughs> Boy, it was really great being nominated. Sorry you didn't get that. Yeah. yeah. It was an honor to take part. I. Congratulations to the winners, whoever they were. They really deserve it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we'll, and we'll do the, you know, fuck all you guys. I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boy, congratulations on winning the any Man, that's amazing. That's <laughs> so, a huge uh, deal. If, if you win, you need to do a map that's basically just your torso, your arms up in the air, flipping <laughs> people off. And yes. then, yeah, like the abs can be like a river running through like some fields. You can you can get like it, it, a but, but yeah. like a river of like pizza because that's what my abs are made of. That's pretty much yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. The pizza river is the best river to find yeah. pizza. I don't fish. have abs. I have slices. Yeah, nice. slices. <laughs> only mm. only six. No, there's eight. No, there's yeah. <laughs> there's there's eight, and they're all shaped like triangles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <I> swear <laughs> pizza. <laughs> Yeah. You you get the uh, you the, could, uh, but you shouldn't. The abs are separated by a uh, a river of marinara. <laughs> and hey, you know it's populated by anchovies. 
No, Nathan. No. You just ruined everything. <laughs> I mean, you really wanted to fish the Pizza River. <laughs> yeah, you I can't assume, now because of anchovies. I assume you'll find pineapples. No, you, you won't find them either. You won't find pineapples. Oh, you're, you're not. You're not one of those monsters that puts pineapple <laughs> on your pizza. <laughs> no, the only fruit that belongs on a pizza is a tomato. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It is a fruit. Yeah. You you don't you don't want to put bananas on pizza? I mean, come but on. Absolutely, one hundred percent not. <laughs> there, there's like Banana bananas chips. or berries. Um. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get into this argument. Oh my god! No, there's a really good one. You you've probably seen it online. It's the uh, how to uh, the different stats in D and D. How to explain what they are using tomatoes? Yeah, wisdom you... and intelligence. Wisdom, intelligence is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. Yep, <laughs> it's exactly uh... where my mind went. And then uh, uh, charisma is. Trying to sell a tomato-based fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Yeah, no, it's a uh, strength is uh, what you use to crush a tomato. Dexterity is what you use to throw a tomato. Uh, constitution is what you use to eat a bad tomato. Intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to try and put a tomato in a fruit salad. And charisma is selling a tomato-based fruit salad. Excellent. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's like, that's great. I love it. That's true. Uh, also, it works for bunnies. You no. can just replace that all with bunnies. And, you don't uh, put bunnies in fruit salad. No, the bunny is a fruit. You, well, yeah, I, I beg to <laughs> de- It's a droop. A bunny is a droop. They're just his ears. <laughs> yep. There you go. Raspberries are aggregate droops. Ras bunnies? Right, you shut up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna get a better one than that at this point. <laughs> oh, you've peaked. I peaked. Yep. Good night, folks. That's the end of my career. Shut it down, guys. We're done. <laughs> Shut it down. Turn the lights off. <laughs> we burn this show, mother Tear down. down that wall. <laughs> <laughs> tear down that wall. Yeah. Let's see if we can explain D and D's dads with the Berlin Wall. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Strength is what it takes to knock the wall down. <laughs> Agility is what it takes to go over the wall. Next there is a hang glide over the wall. <laughs> yeah, to hang glide over the wall. <laughs> Constitution is how long it takes you to bang your head on the wall. Intelligence, <laughs> Intelligence is how to get is around the to wall. Bang your head on the wall. <laughs> no, that's wisdom. Intelligence ah. is how to get around the wall. <laughs> and charisma is how you figure out to convince other people to tear down the wall. There you go. See? Sure. Yeah. Aren't you, aren't you glad we went down that rabbit hole? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now rabbits. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We're back to the bunnies. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that feels like it's the end of the show. I <laughs> don't know. Um, we, could, we could do an outro, though, I think. So, I, I don't know if you've listened to our show before, Chris, but this is normal. Probably I've listened to a couple, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, good. So you know. That's yeah, pretty much the whole so, episode. So are you basically going, yeah, this sounds about right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> yep. Pretty much the whole show. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll t- yeah, we'll do an outro. Why not? Let's try on, that. On the bright side, Nathan yeah. does a superb job editing for content. That's yes. right. That's uh, that's right, because you will uh, listen to the final product and go, wow, that sounded competent. <laughs> well, I, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's good times. Good times. <laughs> quick, quick side note to you, Nathan. Did you want to put up mostly unedited episodes on YouTube as one hour long shows every other week? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I was uh, doing. Okay. Because, I mean, you can keep in most of the, the, the content from this one if you want for that. That's true. Um, the only thing I would suggest cutting out would be, like, anything that's, mm, you know, like, inappropriate to actually have on a show. So the entire thing? Yes. Uh, I don't <laughs> think we actually did much of anything. Yeah, we didn't do much of anything is probably the, the best way to put it. 
No. That should be the title of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be the tagline. We didn't do much of anything on this show. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> Sometimes the asides I take out anyway, but, um... But that's fine. Anyway. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, let, yeah. Let's let's attempt doing an outro. I think we can do that. I feel like we can do that. We if can we really believe, we know how to do things. if we click our heels yeah. together three times, why are you wearing heels? Uh, because it makes me feel pretty, Alex. And yeah, shut yeah, up. Yeah. Uh, he's a strong, oh. independent man, and he don't need no flash shoes. That's right. <laughs> Damn straight. Okay. I don't know why I got, like, sassy there for a minute. Probably because of the heels. <laughs> I was just going to say probably because of those heels. You're wearing. Probably because of the heels, you know. I... <laughs> oh, and then it turns, uh, carriage turns back into a pumpkin, and I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Cool. Outro. Hey, uh, Alex, do you think we need a map uh, to get through the outro of a show? Uh, you know, we probably do. You know, Chris, that might be the next big project for you to work on. Just a map of how to get out of a Delve outro. That sounds good. Dungeons yeah. and outros. Dungeons and un- outros. Undelve. Yeah, yeah. What's the, uh, what's the opposite of Delve? Of, uh, uh, uh probably sense. whatever you do with that ballista. <laughs> so, if folks... Uh, want to find out more information about Delve, Alex? Where could they go? The internets! You can find us at www.delvecast.com Yeah, you can. The show's there. Other stuff is there. Go look at it. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, Chris, uh, they can also find uh, a lot at Loot the Room. I believe that if you go to Loot the Room, that's pretty much where you can find <laughs> all of your maps. Yeah, lootheroom.uk Everything's on there. Excellent. Uh, and uh, if uh, people want to get their hands on Bullet Storm, can they go there as well? Yeah, you can go there or go to DMs Guild. It is free. It won't cost you a penny. Take Ooh. it. It's yours. Excellent. Sharks for free. That feels... Boom. Land sharks. Land sharks. Tornadoes. All land, land shark... sharks all the time. All land sharks all the time for freezies. You got to love that. Always for freezies. Easy breezy, freezy, shark, NATO. You just uh, lost the outro. I did not <laughs> lose the outro, Alex. The outro just got a hundred times better because of sharks. He's vamping. Let him he, have it. He is. <laughs> I'm going to snap now. Uh, okay, I'm Vogue. I'm going to Vogue. Um, great. So, uh, you can also find... You can also find uh, uh, us on iTunes and on Google Play and pretty much wherever you can find podcasts if you look up Delve. And please rate and review and subscribe on whatever service you like. You like and share it with your friends. Because and share it with your friends. How, that's how you make friends happy. You, or you share make, it with your enemies. That's share it you with your... Happy. Yeah. That's how you make your enemies not your enemies. Yeah. No, actually, I think I'm going to edit together uh, episodes of the show specifically to share with your enemies. <laughs> I, the seven-hour megamix. It is the seven-hour <laughs> megamix, and it will have all of the uh, all all of the asides and the long pauses and everything that we had in the show. It will be the completely unedited version of Delph. It could just it be will... an hour of people going. Um, um, um. Oh, I got to make that episode now. Uh so. <laughs> You can find us on Twitter. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and our show is at Delve Podcast. And Chris, you are also on Twitter. I am Me. at Pangalactic. That's right. You are at Pangalactic. And Do so, if you, you happen wanna... to uh, have any gargle blasters on you, always good. Very good. Forty-two of them. Oh, so you have lemons wrapped around a gold brick? Yes. Good. And a towel. Good. Anyway, does um, Nathan does Nathan not get this this nope, reference? No, nope, no, nope, no, nope. hitchhikers. I get I get the reference. <laughs> I'm just wondering just when funny. the reference is ending. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I'm never sure. <laughs> 
after you told me that story about the herogenous zone that was like a mile long, I think I lost you on everything. Uh, I think it was hitchhikers. five miles. It, sorry, it was five miles. I'm sorry. It was something. It was uh, the triple-breasted horror of Eroticon, like six. Yep. And, and... Zaphod and her were, were, were well acquainted. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I imagine. Uh, and it wouldn't be hard to find her. I imagine. Um, so, anyway, what were we talking about? Hitchhikers. We were doing an outro. We were doing an outro? Were we? I'm not sure anymore. I'm going to say yes. Anyway, um, I want to thank... Chris, congratulations on the any nomination slash win. First thank of all. You. Yeah, yeah. Uh, either way, it's a, an honor to be nominated, and it's a real honor to win. I'm sure... <laughs> Yes, correct. <laughs> there you, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and congratulations with Bulletstorm and, and Loot the Room. You got so much going on, man. That's awesome. Cool, thank you. Uh, and, uh, and until next time, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Delve. Bye. Bye-bye.